Okay, folks. So we're now uh, in a in a sort of a gold crushing down scenario here on the G twenty one contract. So we've essentially come offered heavily under the S one down here. We're currently down one point three percent on the day. We were looking at trying to catch some some bids on the two fifty EMA here. As you can see on the left, uh, sorry, just here is the daily bar on gold, and then on the left here is the VIX futures slash four slash VX. Uh, on my think or swim. You can see uh, this chart here is the one hour. Uh, this chart here is the five minute and the one below is the one minute. Now, as you can see, um, this, this trend we're looking at here is, let me go out to uh, max month all time on the VIX. And you can see the previous high 69.4 matching up to the high of Feb 2018 volatility gives us this downtrend. And we broke out over here up to new highs, 80 spot 85 on COVID. Now look where we are. We're back down testing this trend from the upside. So there are there, there's there's reasons for bulls and bears to be getting involved here at this. The only thing is the the squawker came on just before this volatility um, and said that the VIX cash was dropping under 20. And so maybe that, you know, in terms of volatility. Um, maybe some stops to run around there um, and th then a trickle on, a knockdown effect happened here. And so then I, I looked at the VIX cash, couldn't really see much volatility happening, but I went to the futures here with front month futures VIX, which I've just explained to the room. Uh, technically, there is there's quite a, an interesting level here for the VIX. Um, it basically that multi-year down, uh, downtrend, so capping the highs, and then we broke out over that over COVID, we're now retraced back to that trend uh, from the upside. And so there's probably, there's probably the volatility that we're gonna expect for repositioning for people to hedge their long equities exposure with some put calls, um, but from the looks of it, it looks like people are actually going to be uh, are buying a ton of calls for, i.e., you know, the, the VIX is indicative of 60 day forward pricing uh, of the of the equities markets. So that means that if the VIX drops, that means people are piling into calls, calling higher prices on their equities for 60 days ahead. If if the VIX is rising, that means that people are buying more puts than calls, meaning they are targeting lower prices within 60 days. So, um, so uh, what we've done is actually we're crushing down on the VIX right now. So this probably this makes sense in a classical correlation sense that people are rotating out of risk products into equities, and we're seeing a bit across U.S. equities right now on the back end. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is, so I had a conversation with um, some of the guys on the pro training this morning, and it was uh, the idea that, you know, a day like this, which is a holiday impacted session, so you've got short, so markets in America are open today, they're just observing shortened trading hours, but often then over this period, when a holiday's on Thursday, like Thanksgiving and Friday, volumes are low, now that can mean things are quiet, and they respect ranges, and, you know, you can see just playing off, you know, the highs and lows, but then the opposite can also happen due to the lack of almost participants. And you can get these quite sharp, quite radical moves on the back of the fact that there's just not a lot of people in the marketplace. So like gold, for example, we know is already a incredibly volatile product to trade in the first instance. If you eradicate out a lot of the volume sat there uh, on the ladder, then, then you can get these quite, sharp moves and um yeah interesting that that 200 dma as well obviously was quite a big one i know in, uh, at least on the daily continuation that i look at that was a key area that's held up price really since the main bulk of the activity which was the selling on monday tuesday and obviously that getting wiped out <laughs> that was that bottom end of the consolidation that i was talking about in the briefing a couple of times from the july uh, phase of, of consolidation from around just shy of well, around 1800 to uh, kind of 20 at the top. And yeah, a lot of this, I think it's indicative of the
the conditions to, of today specifically um, in terms of the scope and size the speed of that move you don't, as you've already said that uh, I don't think you actually need a news catalyst it's almost like the technicals are the catalyst that's right um, so that's an important thing to understand here markets don't always need to move on Everything. the back of news in that Everything. sense so how do you manage this, Tim? Talk, talk me through it now. We are recording. So uh, yeah, all right. So this is kind of high volatility. So I, I use OCO orders and I work limits. So I have inflection areas that I think are interesting and I'll put a limit there with like a 10 or a 20 stick stop. And I, I'm hoping like as the market shuts down and I put a, an offer on at a level, it will just whip back to try and find a bid and then get smacked down. And as it comes up in that bid i'll get filled on my limit order and then it shuts down so right now i just had one of them for an 80 tick profit right so as soon as it's filled the profit order is is also sitting there it came up filled me and bang down like within half a second it takes you out like so that's what you kind of want to do in highly volatile markets you don't want to be hitting in at market trying to just jump in you want to be working limit orders. Um, so now I basically I'm just pairing back some losses that I got and trying to buy a couple of key them. So Actually, yeah, talk, talk me through the Dow then. Yes. Of, um... So I'm like, okay, well, if, if gold is tanking off, something else has got to be giving on the upside, right? And so on the Dow, um, on the Dow, we had like we were monitoring. I'm going to share my chart here. Yep. Um, on the Dow here, as you can see, sorry. On the Dow here. Just so but while you get that up, the dollar's just taking a bit of a move as well now. Just saw the major pairs just perking up a little bit. It's your okay. own cable. See the charts here, the gold charts? Yep. Yeah. All right. So on the Dow, um, I'm just going to pop this down. On the Dow, I'm looking at a breakout over the Asia pack highs of yesterday. I have this range that we fell out of, came back in, went bid, and now we're holding the highs. It's a slower play, but that's all right. I like that. Um, the S&P, I could have been getting on this S&P, but it's a messy market. Oil now is actually taking a bid as well. The dollar dropping. You're, okay, this is going to be a pretty volatile session here because... I look, I think this dollar is going to test below this support of yesterday, which is then going to be pretty much upside on the euro. Yeah, talking, the euro is sat there right now, testing yeah. up at around the morning high. So I was talking about potential shorts here on this point in the, in the, in the, in the pre US session video, but uh, I said, we'd have to wait and see what the situation is once we get up here. So now dollar at this key point, euro at this key point i need to say to myself is this going to continue is this volatility going to continue or are now we done and it's just going to we're going to retrace quite back yeah Go. and then one of the, one of the things if i can just quickly Go ahead. um so so it almost feels like the sequence then here was initially with the gold livening things up then as a subsequent domino effect a few other correlated assets start moving in relationships we just discussed. But looking at gold here, if that was the initial indicator then of the, of the first um, catalyst to then create the, the movement across the board, I mean, gold is holding up on that longer term daily level at the moment. So that was what we were talking about when I was saying just several minutes ago that gold could get quite hairy here. That, that was a reference to if we break down through this level, well then, you know, I think then it really people will start chasing it down. And as we said, with the the generally thinner volumes, then you know, pushes of another 20, 25, 30 dollars, 60, 70 dollar loss on the day is not uncommon uh, in these types of conditions. So quite interested now as well as looking at even if you're not, you know, like Tim's looking at the euro or even in the Dow, doesn't necessarily, although we're looking uh, we're not looking to trade gold in this instance given it is a bit difficult given how quickly it's moving it can act then as the flag if you like for not just the entering but the managing of subsequent other positions uh, but i can highlight the size so 161 here uh, on the four times but look at this liquidity here on above right this this is where traders get really screwed in terms of ladder reading skills they think, oh, there's a whole lot of volume above. 
So this is going to keep the market down. Well, you have to think the opposite. More liquidity on one side means the market will tr is more likely to trade that side than the thinner liquidity side. Okay, so it means when you see size, you need to think about trade facilitation in that direction. Okay, so the reason why I'm, 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 I'm interested in along here, I mean, look, this thing might, this buyer at 9410s may disappear and it will pull down to this volume here at the th uh, 380s or 375s, right? See, there's more volume here. It could just rotate down, but I'm, I'm now basically positioned that someone is going to, yeah, okay, so here you go, 410s, 148, 49 contracts exchanging, 181 exchanging on the bid. Okay, now they're out of the market, right? Now it's, now it's just passively auctioning here. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just about to try and flatten that because I don't want the rotation down to the 70, 30, uh, 375s. No, I'm not going to take that. I'm just going to wait now because there's a lot of stack bids at the high of day here or offers here at the high of day. See this? But the, to me, that was worth uh, putting the risk on. To see, I mean, having obviously just sat in front of charts for a couple of tens of thousands of hours, <laughs> one of the observations I often see is that when you get these types of momentum pushes in the market, uh, where there isn't other, anything other than that, and it's kind of like goes in these kind of wave patterns almost in momentum. Um, sometimes what I see is when we get to the top and bottom of hours, it's almost like the flush, the effort, it kind of pushes into the, the top and bottom of the hour, and then it then it's over. Yeah. Have you ever identified that? Absolutely. You get you get a volatility push, and then it just unwinds. Yeah. And so yeah, that's. For sure. So that was quite a point of um, frustration for myself and a couple of the traders um, that I used to work with on a prop desk and that we would trade something directionally really well on volatility. And then we, we wouldn't catch the turn and flip the other way. And that was kind of okay with us because we were making money and we we didn't need to try and nail the turn right um but yeah this this guy was not really playing ball here or sorry no that's sorry that's a different ladder um so the thing is is you know you, you don't have to try and catch the turn and you can really give up quite a lot of p l trying to catch a turn and it you can you can actually give back everything you just made um trying to catch a turn in the market so I wouldn't really recommend trying to do it um, that often, um, apart from when it's extremely obvious and the exhaustion is, is 